when you first start SketchUp, it should look something like this. Now, I like to have my own template set up, so I'm just going to show you how to set up a template and how to adjust some of the settings that is available for you. Okay, I'm just going to open up a ready-made template for myself. And this template shows uh, various different styles and I'll explain that. You can check a lot of things by going window, styles, and in the edge settings, these are things that I would like to have it checked. Um, you can go and have more depth cue or extension or jitter, but uh, these things don't necessarily help me while I'm modeling. So. I have these things unchecked and I would like to show edges while I'm modeling. However, I do like to have endpoints with a value of 2 because I can see each points where my endpoints are. If a line is divided into 2, the endpoints allow you to see where those endpoints are. And if this value is 1, you, can, you cannot see those endpoints even though it's enabled. So I usually like having them as two so that you can tell on your screen that there is an endpoint or divided line in case you need to clean them up. So uh, that's how I like to have the edge set up. Now notice the top is blue and this is actually because this face is reversed and you can or oriented by having it reverse face then um, it reverses and any face actually has um, two different faces now there's a front uh, which I have set up as white and there's back which I have set up as uh, light blue now I have made that clear distinction in the style just so that I understand there's on the front and the back in my model. As, as you model more and more, you will notice that your model sometimes will have the back face reversed. And for rendering purposes, that can be actually creating a lot of trouble for you. So it's important that you always orient your faces, the front face facing outside. Now, having said that, um, how to change the color of this is actually here, the face settings. Um, it will indicate front color white and the back color blue. Now, you can change this color by going through the, these different colors, but I do recommend you have um, somewhat different color in between them so that you understand um, when a face is reversed. Now that you have saved this um, as um, your own uh, template, uh, you can set it up as your default template by going save as template and you can give it a name and make sure you set it up as a set as default template and you can type in description. I'm just going to type in today's date. And I'm gonna save that and I do have my own template set up already so it's asking me if I'm going to overwrite the existing file but it shouldn't show it on your screen so I have pressed yes and every time I load up a new uh, SketchUp it's gonna show up like this now I do have this little dot that I don't like so I'm just gonna remove that and I'm gonna resave the template so every time you start your sketchup it should look something like this now I'm gonna show you how to add geolocation to your sketchup model if you go to file geolocation add location and this is your site uh, this site is 
available to search up with an address just like in Google Maps or Google Earth um, you can type in 1601 East Market Street Greensboro New York City 27401 now if you search that up this location should show up now if you zoom out a little bit north of that northeast of that you will be able to locate your own site now uh, you can have that centered in your screen and select region and you can roughly have that in your center now if this is too large of an area for your site you can cancel that and zoom in a little bit and select region you can have that centers you can also adjust the size just gonna have it sound like that and grab and that should uh, take yourself into a sketchup with the uh, geographical data imported now the Google Earth does have um, some terrain available however it is not as accurate as your own survey so you shouldn't rely on it however it can be useful when you're trying to do uh, just a simple model for yourself now um, the way to bring that out is go to view toolbars and make sure that you have the layers checked so I'm just gonna check that and it should look somewhat like this on your own SketchUp and you can click the layer manager and it should show you somewhat layer um, and two additional layer has been added because of this import of the geolocation data and the terrain is actually not visible at the moment only the snapshot is and the snapshot is the uh, picture that is imported from the Google data and you can enable the terrain which is um, which adds a curvature or the terrain topography uh, within your own model now I do have to mention that this is not as accurate so it is only advised uh, to use it as a reference I usually check it off while I'm trying to model um, one of these once you have implemented the geolocation data you can go ahead and import the CAD file. The CAD file is provided drawing 01 and um, it should be brought in. Now keep in mind that sometimes when you bring in a CAD file it might not correctly be scaled or oriented. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So try to position this in the correct location by selecting the CAD file that is imported and um, take the move tool M for short and you can try and match up anything that you see on the already imported data so I'm gonna try and line up with the building here and sometimes these images uh, don't necessarily are in scale for example like the building can be slightly off it's due to the, uh, the satellite pic images that are taken from slightly angled view not directly above so actually the best reference usually are the actual ground so I'm gonna try to match this corner here Once I match that, you notice that on this side the planter is kind of off. So what I can do is actually orient this, and I have figured that um, let's see, 1.2 would be a good measure to rotate it as. So 1.2, and it seems like everything sort of lines up. Now, what you can do is actually um, try and use this top, top, topography 
uh, information. So what you can do is uh, double click this to go into edit group mode and you select the data. Now sometimes the complexity of the topography can actually uh, reduce uh, the accuracy. Uh, so for example um, as you have it here this type of uh, circular model actually might um, create some glitches on uh, the contour model. So what I'm going to do is just for that part I'm going to remove that. So you can uh, delete by hitting the delete key on keyboard after selecting it and also this. I'm going to actually try and move the stairs. So after roughly I have done that I'm just going to zoom far out so that I can select this. And then you can go to draw and sandbox from contours. And if you don't see this option you're going to have to go Windows, Preferences, and then you go to Extensions. And make sure your Sandbox tool is uh, checked. If not, you're going to have to uh, check it and actually restart the SketchUp. So once you have done that, you can go to Draw, Sandbox, and From Contours. And you will, it will show the progress bar. And once it reaches 100, it's going to create the topography in the model. So the topography is made and I'll show you how to have the same mapping as the um, ge uh, geography or geolocation data uh, that has been implemented into the model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint bucket tool and it is B for short and what you can do is you can hold down the alt key on the keyboard to um, get the simple paint tool so you can click here or actually just uh, hold down the alt key and you can pick any areas uh, on the school uh, map that has been brought in here so once you do that it actually selects that texture and what you're going to do is um, you're going to go in here and if you actually apply here it's not going to show the correct because um, the uh, mapping is actually applied as as a group so avoid doing that and just I'm just, I'm just going to undo that and actually I'm just going to take selection tool go inside of that group and by double clicking it and also double click again to go inside of the topography that you have created. So once you're in there you can again take the paint bucket tool and you already have this texture or map being selected so you can just click here and you can actually you're gonna have to um, select the mapping again have that exactly projected data so um, you're gonna pick that mapping again and then you're gonna apply there now once you apply there you should notice that the same exact position has been brought in here so what you will see is that um, once you bring that um, directly just vertically down it should match the mapping data so that's what you should see and however I'm not going to move it into that position because I want to work on the rest of it first and um, before I do that I'm actually going to put this uh, topography group I'm just going to uh, select that and actually move that to a proposed grading layer so that it won't show while I'm working on something else so I'm going to put it in proposed grading once I do that, you can select this layer manager and it will show a list of layers that you have within the model. 
I can uncheck the proposed grading and it will actually make it disappear. Now these layers actually follow the same layer format that was in the CAD so uh, you'll see the same layers that you have used except these two where the Google Earth terrain and snapshot has been um, implemented or imported from the geolocation data. So that is how you're going to uh, create the topography and um, uh, mapping on top of that while you also Im import the CAD file. Once you're in here, you'll notice that you can zoom in and out with your scroll button on your mouse and also you can hold down the middle button or the scroll key in order to orbit. But however, you can hold down the shift key while you're doing that and it allows you to pan. And this will um, easily um, orient yourself within the model. What I'm going to do is zoom in here and go into that. You can double click here in order to edit the group of the CAD file. And now you can hold down the shift key while you're in the selection tool in order to select multiple objects. Now if you select, if you click on the same object again, it allows you to deselect any of the object that you don't want to be selecting. So I'm going to try to select all the faces that are created for the models. I'm sorry, the buildings. And while I have selected all of them, what I'm going to do is edit and copy, Control C for short. And then after I have done that, I'm just going to click outside in order to exit the uh, group edit mode. And as I have done that, what I'm going to do is edit and paste in place. And once I have done that paste in place, um, I'm going to try to select them again by selecting everything in the box. Now this doesn't select the CAD file because the CAD file is actually, that group is a lot larger than what I have included. So um, I can select all of that and make it a group by right clicking it and make group. And once I make the group, I can double click that in order to go inside of that group and then take push pull tool and you can try to zoom in and hover around until that surface gets selected and go either up or down and tell it the direction of where you would like to go to sketch up. So I want to go up and up to 30 feet you can see over here. So 30 feet, so I'm just going to type that enter. And same thing for other buildings. So, so I'll tell it the direction 30 feet. And this is 30 feet is just a number that where you can just get sense of there is a building around this site. Now you can um, make it higher, for example, 50 feet with this one. And if I want to increase this building a lot further up, I can just hover around again and then tell it the direction and uh, type in any additional amount that I want to increase it to. So 20 feet, which will um, in some uh, 50 feet increase um, in total. And this one, let's say I want to increase 30 feet higher up, so it's 30 feet, so it will be 60 feet in total. And once you have done that, you should uh, click outside or to exit that group edit. However, these buildings are still within the proposed. Um, sorry, the building layer. So if you can check that, um, all of them will disappear. So keep in mind uh, you have those buildings. However, I don't need it. For now, so I'm just gonna uncheck that just like the proposed grading. So I have the topo here, however, I'm just gonna uncheck that layer in order to hide it for now or um, clear space.
Now, some of you might have noticed that there's a lot of layers that is imported from CAD that you don't necessarily need within SketchUp and I'm going to show you how to clean that up and show you how uh, some of the plugins that are uh, useful for you to uh, use it as a modeling tool. Now, uh, there should be uh, plugin files uh, available for you and you can go here um, yeah, these are some of the plugins that I like to use uh, for myself. Now, um, one of the useful ones are Purge All Tool, and I'm going to use this one as an example of how to install. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to Windows Computer, and you can you can go to Local Disk program files usually 86 because uh, SketchUp only runs on 32-bit and go go to SketchUp 8 and go to plugins and these are the plugins that are available so usually when you download a, a plugin and when you um, go into the folder it usually has these RB which is Ruby script and um, these uh, these are the plugins and what you're going to do is you can copy this and paste it on here um, just note that some of these programs do have folders that are included for example um, uh, the selection toys uh, do have these folders are available so in this case you would have to move all three of them in here so once you move that and restart the SketchUp, you should have those plugins available. And once it installs correctly, um, you should be able to go to SketchUp and Window Preferences. And from Extensions, you should have all those plugins listed there. And if, if one of them is not checked, then they're not being activated. So you can do that by checking it and you can press OK and uh, some of them might be hidden so you can go to toolbars and the plugins are available here and um, some of the tools are available here for example the make faces and selection toys and sandbox is also a uh, plugin for pro version and you can also have the list of plugins in here and some of the very useful plugins um, is the purge tool so plugins and you can press on purge tool once you have that plugin installed and you can press that and it's gonna give you uh, these options I usually have all of them yes and ok and after that it's gonna show you a report of how many components are purged or deleted, layers that are empty, the materials that is not being used. So um, this should cut down and clean up a lot of layers that you, that is not being used, uh, including the components. Now this is important because as you model more and more, SketchUp has a tendency to save all the components uh, that was made within the model. So even though you are not using the component, um, SketchUp has uh, the file reference within um, the model file. And as time goes by and then you model and more and more, um, the file size will increase. And if you don't have a habit of purging it every once in a while, um, you will notice the file size increases dramatically so um, you have to have habit of um, just purging every once in a while um, if you feel like your model is just becoming larger than what it should be then uh, purging is a good idea and now um, one of the tools that is available for you free as a student is um, 101 bit tools and one 
I'm sorry, 1001 bit tools. And um, the this has a lot of um, useful functions such as um, extend, um, just like how it's used on CAD. And it has some stair making and also a pitched roof tool and windows and um, a lot of uh, functions that you might not be able to find as a um, as a native functions of uh, SketchUp and this is what I would like to have and uh, you can also look for the mirror selection um, if you have that installed what you can find is once you have a model you can mirror it just like um, how you would usually have it on the CAD file so for example I want this mirrored what I would do is I'll select them and the mirror selection and I'll draw a mirror uh, line in between them and then it will mirror them and you can either tell it to erase the original selection or not and it will be the same thing that is generating on the other side so that's an example of the mirror tool and um, as you're modeling it it will come in handy uh, once in a while uh, and uh, um, as you have a model that is repeating over and over you will find it very useful Now you probably noticed that some of the lines that I have are too dark, including the um, Google Earth snapshot that I have brought in. So in contrast, it can't really see the lines clearly. Now I'm going to show, the, show you how to saturate that. Um, take the paint bucket tool, B for short, and take the sampling tool again, or uh, hold down Alt key. And once you have selected uh, the texture that you want to edit, go to Edit 10, and you can give it opacity you know, to saturate it. So actually, that will bring out the contrast of those black lines that you have imported from CAD. So this is how you do that. And I'm going to try and check off the layers that I don't need for now. So I'm gonna go and try and uncheck one of these and if it's a layer that I don't need for now for modeling purpose I'm just gonna have it checked off now the reason why I don't want to delete the layer is that I'm gonna keep doing all the informa necessary information that I brought in from CAD file however I want to keep it simple so that I can easily recognize the geometry that I have brought because sometimes they end up becoming very complex and it's hard to read what you're trying to model so I do advise that you have these layers named correctly and also keep the geometry simple so that it's easier for you to read it in SketchUp now I'm just gonna and some of the secondary geometry that I can model later, I'm just going to check it off so that and I just check on and off so that I can locate where it is that line is located. Now if you know your layers and your model very well, you can just go ahead and do that. However, there's some that I want to keep so that I can edit. This. I do not need anything for now because I can add that later. So the benches, secondary elements, sister. I'm going to keep sister so that it actually gives me a good reference of the lines that I want to create, some of the elements that are parallel to the system. So I'm going to keep that. And I'm also going to merge the 
more. Delete anything that I don't need. And it's always good, a good idea to save model while you're doing it. And short key is Control S. File and save. And I don't know if you have noticed, but I do keep my models with some numbers so I can actually keep track of some previous models that I have created. Uh, for this video purpose, I'm keeping it video 0 too because this is the second model that I've saved. However, you can actually, um, every time you make a major change or and when it has been a while that since you created the model, then um, you can actually give it another number so that you actually keep track of some older models that you have. So save it like that. So while I'm here, I'm going to try and match the topography that I made um, with the ground. So what I'm going to do is make the topography visible. Is actually about the miles it's up here. And what I'm going to do is actually double click this and have to go into that group. And I'm just going to try and take out that topography group outside of the CAD file because it allows me to actually get an access of that much easier that way. So I'm going to right click it. And you will see some options, however, uh, a lot of times you can cut down the process by using the shortcuts. In this case, it will be Control X for cut. Um, you can also see that there's all the commands in here. So I'm going to do that. And the same function that I used last time. So I'm going to click outside and I'm going to put it in the same place. I'm going to paste in place do that and what I'm going to do is trying to match that ground with here now this topography is actually directly above now so as long as you bring it down in vertical uh, following along the blue axis it should match up so I'm going to show you how to do that while you have that selected and you're going to the new tool you can select surface here and then and try to move that now you will see it moves and when you have it snapped either above that or under um, and snap onto the blue axis now it will indicate you're on the blue axis while you're in there you hold down the shift key and actually makes it bolder or thicker and um, you can move your mouse anywhere and it takes it to reference of um, where you have selected previously. So since I'm on the surface, it's trying to find a surface where it lines up with here. It only moves along the blue axis as long as I'm holding down my shift key. If I let go, it moves. So, and if you press the shift key when you're not snapped on one of the axes, it doesn't. But um, if you have it snapped on the red and hold down the shift key, it will move along the red. However, in this case, I want it on blue, so. I hold down the shift key and run it somewhere there. So now my topography has matched. And since I made my mapping slightly transparent, you see the transparency. However, if you check this, the snapshot goes away and it should line up nicely. And that's how your topography is done. However, um, I don't need it for now, so I'm just going to uncheck that. So if we close grading, I'm just going to uncheck that, and everything else should be nicely shown. I have noticed that the, the cistern does not exactly line up or parallel to uh, these stairs here, so I'm going to uncheck so that it's not feasible for now. Propose system and I'm going to turn on the Google Earth snapshot for me to zoom in and out easier if you don't have anything in the background actually it's quite difficult to zoom in and out so I'm just going to keep that turned on now you'll notice that if I take a rectangle tool or for short um, it doesn't exactly 
line up with these stairs. And the reason why uh, SketchUp behaves that way is because this axis does not line up with any of the object that you have here. So the way you change it is go to axis icon and try to find a good endpoint or a line that you can use it as a reference. I'm going to use this corner as a reference. So click here and it's going to ask me for red axis. So I'm going to try to use this as a reference. Click here and click here because it's asking me for green axis. Now this axis has line, lined up with your model. And now if you take the rectangle to it, it should nicely line up with the stairs. And the reason why I create these rectangles on top of the CAD file instead of going into the CAD um, imported group is because this allows me to keep uh, the model simple and also gives me more control over the model because there are some cases where um, for example, these stairs don't exactly line up. You see, some of the lines don't exactly snap. So um, it's better that um, you draw it on top so that you have more control over it. And there are differences between uh, group and components, and I'm going to explain that by demonstrating the differences. However, um, this allows you to utilize the component function of SketchUp. Now components are much like the blocks in CAD, however with the move tool um, you can easily create uh, objects such as stairs. Now you have a lot of stairs in this area and you can try and use component. Now, uh, I'm going to show you the difference between component and a group and I'm going to make one rectangle on this side and also one over here. So now I'm going to take push pull tool and then increase this by 6.75 inches. You will see that measurement on the bottom right hand corner. Enter. And same thing, you can either double click here which will give you the same distance you just did or you can actually select this click and click here and that I have used this height as a reference. Now uh, there's different selection method if you single click it only selects that one you're pointing at so it can be a line but also same time it can be a face. Now if you double click a face it actually selects that face and including all the surrounding lines. However, if you select triple click, it actually allows you to select anything that surface or the line is touching. For now, it's these, so it has selected this 3D object of that one stair. So while you have selected that with the triple click, you right click it and make it a group. And this one, I'm going to make it a component. So triple click this and then I'm going to make it as a component and then I'm just going to give it a simple name as a stair and then and there's a useful tool move so take the move tool M for short and I'll try to select the left bottom corner and without clicking this yet um, you toggle on which means you just um, press control once don't hold it down just press it once control and which allows you to have this plus sign and you can click here and then click here now once you have done that um, in a length or in a box you don't have to click here but you can type in right now a 14x which allows you to have the stairs um, repeated 14 times so uh, since you have given that distance to SketchUp it can just repeat if you're not satisfied with uh, 14 stairs maybe it went too far then you can type in 10x instead 
and then we'll just give you 10 stairs. For now I need 14, so 14 X, enter. Um, unless you're orbiting around or zooming in and out or using any other tool, if you haven't done anything like that after the move function or the plus sign which indicates a move copy, then it allow allows you to type in 14 X or 10 X, 2 X in order for you to repeat the same function. Same thing here, I'm going to select that, take the move tool, toggle on the plus sign, which is a copy, and click here, and click here, and then I'm going to repeat that 14 times, 14 X, enter. So I have done that. Only the difference between these two set of stairs is that this one is a component and this one is a group. Now components are much like groups, I'm sorry, the blocks of CAD. But the groups are much much like just literal meaning of group where faces and the lines are just kept together. So if you double click this and, and group edit mode, um, if you change any of the object within that, it actually changes everything else as well. However, if you go into the group, it does not change that. So, uh, for for uh, geometry that is being repeated over and over, it's actually best to keep as a component so that you don't next time, for example, you change the height of the stairs or the width or the mapping texture things like that. Um, you don't have to go over every single one of them. You can change one of them and everything will follow. So this one I'm just going to delete and. I'm Going to actually move this one over since it's the same stair. So I'm going to try to get that corner. Use the same copy tool by toggling on the control key and have it here. And I'm going to use the same function from this corner to up here. Click, click, and again 14x. It should repeat nicely and any other change on one of these stairs should change everything else. So that's how you make the best use out of component and the copy move tool. After constructing the stairs, I'm going to make the middle portion here. What I'm going to do is just click here with the line tool. So I'm gonna draw a triangle and uh, follow the red axis, uh, hold down shift, and then click the very top here, the stairs, and then make sure you're on blue axis, click, and also click here. So that gives me the triangle. Take push pull tool and push pull out to this edge here, which is the other side of the stairs. Now, I'm, what I'm going to do is realistically the middle portion would be more raised up than the stairs. So, triple click this and then right click, make a group. I'm going to try to raise this up uh, about a foot. So, make sure you're on blue axis and then type in one foot. So, that's raised up. However, you'll notice that it's floating. So, uh, what I'm going to do is from the selection tool, I'm going to go to Group Edit by double clicking it, look underneath it, uh, take Push Pull tool, and then you take it and put it to the top. So that's that. And from the drawing, I noticed that there's that offset on each side. So what I'm going to do is from that Group Edit, uh, I'm going to take Offset tool. F for short and I give it an offset of 6. So I'm just going to type in 6 inches, enter. And uh, realistically, this will be this material will be more pushed in than the out outside. So, what I would do is take push pull tool, give it a direction, type in 2, enter. Just 2 inches. And also, I'll do the same thing for the outer edge here. Uh, so just drawing a triangle and make sure I'm on the right axis and hold down shift click here here 
بده چوتو click and then make your group now only the difference here is that since I had this portion here while I was um, triple clicking it I was including this as well what I can do is I can cancel selecting this by double clicking this so hold, while holding down shift so if I hold down shift and double click I'll include this and if I do that again will not include that so I can make that as a group and I'll actually after making a group I'll make it a component this actually eliminates um, typing down all the val uh, values uh, for example the name or the description sometimes you know you can re easily recognize by the shape so you don't really need to type in any of that and that information will be shown here in the components so if you go in model and it lays down all the uh, components that you have used for the model and you have all of these but I know that not all of them are named for example this one it's named as group number three which is fine with me so I'm just gonna keep it that way so make that I, I've made that a component the reason why is I'm going to be using the same thing on this side. So make sure I'm on green axis, hold down shift, and just click. So if I go in here and select all, or triple click, and then raise that up by one foot, you notice the, it follows on this side as well. I'm just going to pull down the bottom. So I don't have to do the work twice. So that's that. The stairs here, and later on, I'm just going to apply the materials. And what it seems here is that this portion actually extends out. So I'm just going to pull that out to here. It should be the same with that. And the same type of modeling here. Uh, it's just that it's a bit shorter. So I will be doing that. But it seems like the steps are the same, so I'm going to take one of these. So I'll take move to, toggle on, to copy by pressing control. And looks like it's all the same. So I'm going to take the plugin, which is the mirror selection. It looks like it's, I can make use of these two. So if I click, your selection. Now I'm going to use the center point, draw a guideline, make sure you stand between green and blue and it's going to ask me erase original selection. No, I want to keep it. So it has drawn the other one on the other side. And this way I can take select two, move to toggle on control with copy and then click there and click here and type in 4x or 5x so stair has raised up and make sure and also the same deal so draw the triangle make sure I'm red click and since it's the same type of geometry, what you can do is you can bring it here, and then since this is not a component yet, changing it, the geometry will not change this model here. So I'm going to just push that there, and now make it a component, and just copy this on this side, and also. I have to raise it up, so I'm going to raise all of them. You can always reference from something else, so you can just start from this ground as long as you have. Select it all three, take the move tool, click here, pick it up, snap it onto blue axis, and then give it the distance one foot, and then it'll be raised up. 
can just slightly live underneath it. Push pull tool. It's the same deal on this one. And probably look at that'll be applied with that as well since they are complete. And I need to give it an offset. So six inches and push it in two inches. So the stair is made on this side. Now there's this repeating stairs and from what I have understood is that they're not each steps, it's actually a bigger step that's divided by two different materials. So I'm gonna model it that way. I'll try to erase that line so that it's a bigger piece here and actually raise that up by one foot which is you can use that as a reference since that's one foot point or you can just type in one foot and so if I click that you get a component I can call it, give it a special name or you can actually just make it a group and then component to avoid that step so I have done that and this should be going like a stairs here so I'll do 2x which gives me another step down and then since this needs to be divided into two I'll just draw a line here and then I'll apply the material so that'll give a line on all of them now I've noticed that they're the same thing so I'm just gonna double click this and then hit delete and just copy this over so have these three selected and then move to double on the copy and then make sure you're on green axis shift and then all the way down to that edge now I'm just going to show you how to model that for the note before doing that I'm going to do the same thing hold down shift and then use those lines as a reference like that now you'll notice that um, as long as they're parallel and uh, following the uh, integrity of the axes it should be same, uh, very simple to model these uh, orthogonal stuff however when it comes to um, curvy lines things like that the geometry becomes more complex and it's hard to model however for here you can spend uh, more time on uh, using the move tool uh, offset tool the push pull tool get some practice so that you're able to use those um, more uh, frequently and easier way and uh, there's that edge here and I'll model that also as a triangle so red axis and I did notice that um, some of the lines on this side does not exactly line up which is fine um, so I'm just gonna use the same measurements from the other side as long as you always hold down your shift key while you're on blue or red axis your uh, measurements should line up so this one I'm just gonna push out to one foot as the other ones so triple click that make it a component making a group and component then raise that up by one foot same process as the other ones look slightly below it and then push it. so one foot now the way to model this piece back here I think that piece is supposed to be pulled out a little bit like that so you can you have an option of either following that line as if their model perfect however it's going to give you some funny values such as one foot and one inch three sixteenth inch I'm sorry one foot one and three sixteenth of an inch which is probably not your best bet so I, I'm just trying to keep it to a uh, round number or a whole number rather um, so here I would just give it one foot that way uh, you're more aware of, aware of the measurements that you're playing with. That's why it's more important uh, relying on, rather than relying on CAD, uh, as you build on SketchUp, you have more control over the models.
So from here what it seems of it is that it's got thicker edge down here, up there, and the sides that cover and this is a water feature with uh, slight steps when I uh, give it uh, about 6 inches uh, going up. So um, what I would do is uh, draw a triangle on this. Plus sides so snap it onto red and then here. but instead of going all the way I'm just gonna do it to here which is roughly seven so I'm just gonna give it six inches and then triple click that make it a group then component and uh, I'm just gonna use that group copy I'm going to use this edge as a reference and then here and what I'm going to do is raise this up uh, rather than moving just this piece alone up because if I do that this side doesn't change with it so I'm going to go within the group select the all then move it up uh, a uh, I'll give it one foot so one foot and put underneath it. Let's give it a direction and type one foot. So that has been raised up on both sides. And the first step, I think it would be uh, more thicker than the other, so I'll give it a one foot. So just draw a rectangle on the side. Like that. Just tell it the direction which way you want to take the rectangle to, whether this way or that way. In this case, it would be this way. So I'm going to type in one foot, comma, one foot, which will give me a perfect square. And you pull it to that side. Make that a component. After you make sort of a geometry, you should make it a component or group so that it doesn't get mixed up. So what I mean is, if you don't make it a group or component, next piece you make, so a uh, more little rectangle and um, 6 comma 6 which, is, which gives you 6 inch by 6 inch if I make that here and then you'll notice that I cannot move this separately from the previous geometry that's why it's important to keep it as a group so I'm gonna triple click this make it a group which is G for short in my case usually set up as a component so you will just right click and make it a group so here I do that and then 6 comma 6 usually if you don't give out any units it usually understands as inches in SketchUp unless you set it different so triple click that make it a group and from my understanding this should be raised up six inch above or uh, maybe like a one inch above so I'll just give it one inch, one inch. and then I'm just going to take copy move to and then another repeat that process 20 times 20x it's not enough 30x that's maybe enough. I'll make it a little more. So 32x. It's always a good to have more than what you need, so because you can delete it. And uh, no, I like uh, 33. So that seems like enough. And then you have a very back here. I'm just gonna draw a rectangle from here to here. And then just all the way to match here. So that's 60 feet. Again, triple click that. Make a group. You can put all of these geometries in different layers if you would like to. However, I'm not going to do that because I don't need it all organized because this is just you can select all of that and just call it give it another layer stairs. Uh, I don't need it to be cleaned up now because it's not as complex but um, I would keep all of these sort of as 
when it came with cat for now that's that's totally up to you and same thing should be modeled here now it looks identical from this side to that side except except uh, some of the components here may be different but once you model the side you can just totally take that over and I'm just gonna do that for what I have here so I'm gonna carefully select that what I want to mirror onto this side so go to 3 holding down shift and then I'm gonna right click it mirror selection and if you don't have this plugin you should install it so I'm just gonna follow the green axis I use that as a my mirror plane I'm drawing my mirror plane so up or blue axis just draw blue axis and click there and then erase original selection no I have to keep what I have so it has drawn here and that should perfectly line up since it's modeled that way so I'm just going to save that always a good idea to save it and also save a different file when you make a major changes so that you have a key you keep track of all the files that you made previously it just in case you need to go back if you just keep saving on the same file once you lose it you lose it or you just copy over it and you can never get that retrieve that information back so same model here I'm just gonna select all of that and use copy tool to it should nicely line up. Same deal here. I should have done this before but if not it's okay. So that and also there's that back but I would not maybe I'll just pull it out to here. Let's see if that works. Um, I just noticed that this piece should be brought out like that. Let's try if that would work here. Now that was not a component so even if I change up geometry on this one not affect anything else that has been used before. So uh, typically if it's a piece that is being used again for as an example like this piece here is used here, but at the same time it's used here. So it's actually a good idea to make your component. Let's do that. Uh, I'm going to delete that one. I'm going to make that as a component. Uh, let's see if any of these pieces is not a component. Well, the stairs is not. So um, it's actually a good idea to keep all of these steps as a component so I don't have to come back and clean it. Uh, sorry, but I'm going to have to do that. So, just select all of that, unselect those, and want that, and then also I need that first piece, and then make that a component, and let's make that a component as well, since that's going to be used again, the same measurements. So, it's going to do that, and I think it was 33x. So that's repeated there, and let's delete that, that, that. And I'm just going to make sure that this is a component, and select this. So I'll take this as a practice, and using all these tools. Use the green axis, hold down shift, and just click somewhere on this surface so it should just recognize where you're trying to move to. So that's that. Let's see if any of these there would actually line up. Okay, now that's slightly longer than what it should be, and the curve piece starts, so I would actually make that separate. And now if I change a length on this one, you'll notice that this piece here also changes the length. So that's not a way to 
model it. And before you make any changes, you can right click it, make it unique. And then, if you after making it unique, uh, that should avoid any changes on the other side. So I'm just gonna use it. Use that edge as a reference. That's where the curve sort of starts. So pull it to there. And actually, since I have made those changes, I'm just gonna delete you. And then mirror function, mirror function again. So you select that. Make sure you've selected everything. And right click, mirror selection. Use that as a center point. Bring it up, blue axis. No. So same thing should have been lined up. That point, which is good. And that's. So after making all of this, I'm going to try to tackle on some of the curved areas. Now in SketchUp, what is different with CAD is that in CAD, all the curvatures are kept as a vector file. Well, these are vector too, but what I mean is that it keeps the um, circle and it does not give segment like SketchUp. So any of the curve that exists will sort of broken down into segments and actually that gives a lot of difficulties modeling. For example here, these curve lines used to meet um, this sort of circle that used to exist here. Now SketchUp gives you ability to give uh, different segments online. So if you give uh, more segment it should more look more smooth. So here it looks more smooth and it's harder to spot any of uh, segments as you increase the numbers on here. I do advise you give it this multiple number of what it used to be. So yeah it's hard to spot a segment however you will notice that as you zoom in these lines don't exactly meet up. So that's a problem because this means that you would have to make the faces because typically if the lines are not met, um, SketchUp doesn't give you a face. If they're met, it gives you a face like this where you can just easily pull up. However, it doesn't when they're lined up. So those are some difficulties you have to keep in mind modeling a curved object. Oftentimes you end up tracing them or picking out little lines so that um, you can make use of those faces. Now, a good example would be sort of like this island curve piece here. Um, you'll notice that there's not really any face generated. That's because some of the lines are not exactly meeting. So what I have noticed would probably be here where a line, two lines are sort of overlapping and they're not meeting exactly at a point. Things like this here. Um, this is not your fault. Um, uh, as it was just being imported from CAD to here, the curve just sort of got screwed up. So what you would usually do, is, since this is very small, I'm just going to trace one more line there and then delete those lines. That should sort of clean up and make sure uh, lines snap to one or the other. If the lines are not met, it's not going to generate any face. So maybe there's something wrong here here but uh, a good way to uh, figure out whether things are bad or not is actually drawing an extra line so if I draw the extra line there and it has created a face and I can just delete that line and the uh, face is kept and that means everything else is good now just want to check the outer side now it's making any it's not making any faces I'm just gonna try to snap it onto that. and that seemed to actually clean, clear up. So I've got these two faces and I'm going to use that uh, from the outside of the CAD file. So what I'm going to do is select these two and then use copy. And instead of using these lines I'm just going to go outside of 
this can file group. So uh, just uh, hit escape or just click outside, and that's still there, but you can't exactly select the face because you're outside of the group. And the same function that I edit and paste in place. So that should actually copy down, I mean paste down the same phase on the same exact location. That way I don't change any integrity of the CAD file that I brought in. So normally this will be modeled um, here maybe one feet up and this will be slightly less than that. So just bring it out one feet and just gonna push back down two feet. Now notice the color change because this is oriented correctly but then this is reversed. You can uh, select one of the face that you like as you use as a reference and then just uh, click orient faces that should uh, kind of change all the geometry that you need. So I'll give it the height difference so that I can later uh, map this one as sort of grass and maybe a concrete on a curb side. So that's an island. Um, now, although this was a complex um, curvature, uh, I can use the CAD file as a reference. Some of these pieces here I might not be able to, so I'm going to get to that later. However, that's one way of doing it. And uh, another one it, that you can tackle on would be a sort of a sidewalk that kind of wraps around the one old sidewalk that you can do that. For example, these ones are simple. You can just simply just trace that over with a rectangle tool and somehow raise it up or depending on the terrain you can make that a curvature, things like that, and it's not as difficult. So I'm just gonna make that a group. Typically, I mean realistically, this wouldn't be a thick concrete piece you can actually go into that group, push that up so that it would be three feet and six inches. Um, so that thickness would be maybe four and a half to make it six inch tall. It's just realistically correct, but I think there is sort of a uh, curvature and I'll worry about that later. But, um, as a model, I'll, I'll just keep it like that. Um, and going to CAD file, what I would like to do is I know there is some problem maybe down here and also some there. And it's the line doubling, um, and that's, that's usually not because it's done incorrectly in CAD, it's because the bore. Uh, importing function of SketchUp from CAD. So I'm going to try if these lines are different. This one seems to be in proposed hardscape, but then these lines are in proposed printing beds. So there are two different lines. So I'm going to have to turn off one of them. Uh, let's see, printing beds. Seems like I have some other lines there. Then this will totally get rid of the lines that I'm trying to use. I'm just going to get rid of this one. Maybe just revise that. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to click that. I'm just going to select that, make it a copy, and then turn that off. And now I'm paste in place now. And then just Change these lines to close this game. That way I have sort of a reference to use. Now, always a good way is sort of connect the dots and see if the model wants to generate a face. So that means from here, that portion is okay with the geometry. Usually, this simpler side is. Good. I'm just going to delete that line there with a eraser tool E for short. And usually a geometry like this should be okay. 
maybe this is double enough as well. So let's hard skip. That line is let's skip. And oh, that's also a retaining. So let's see. sort of fill up mm. okay. as I go I'm just deleting the line so this face is all continuous that's why you have to get used to all the short keys Functions easier. That's that. So it wrapped around. I can use that face sort of uh, as a visual reference. However, there's funny thing here. So I delete that line to clean up. There's something going on here. And then what I can do is just make a simple continuous. Sometimes the lines are okay, but then SketchUp doesn't want to generate. I think it's fine. So I'm just gonna show it to this one. So that's one continuous surface. I'm just gonna copy that instead of using that. And um, copy in place, and paste in place. Okay. And then push that up maybe six inches, which will be sort of raised up from the ground and triple click that, make sure you make that another type of proof. So you can either hide it or keep it in place for later. So that's that. So I'm just gonna turn on some of the lines so that I can use it as well. So I'm gonna try to deal with the curvature here. Um, I'm just going to try use that as a reference. So I'll just use that line. And for now I can, we can hide this H or hide. That way it doesn't get in the way. Um, and you notice that um, these are rectangles without uh, the face which indicates that um, there is some sort of line problem. Um, as long as you sort of clean that up. What you can do is just redraw a line and then or take a this tool here 
and they should nicely just extend the line as you make um, this is a one, um, 1001 bit tools which is available for free for students so you should have that installed and there's an extension tool just like uh, CAD sometimes even if they're going over they don't have a cross point that's why it doesn't draw face and as simple as just redrawing that would allow you another face so in any 3d modeling program has this sort of um, glitch or something that you just have to redraw things like that um, so that's not just SketchUp's problem but that's there and I'm gonna use these faces as sort of a reference I don't think this is exactly the same as the one above so I'm just gonna use them as sort of as a separate geometry yeah so I'm just gonna copy them so like all of that copy paste in place and use one of them raised up one foot same thing if you double click here it will do the same thing now um, I'm only going to select this because I don't want to make these a group for now so I'll make that a group and notice it's blue I mean correctly oriented so reverse faces and from that I use that as a reference for the rest of that one. so that and use this one cool cool so what you do is click click on this face and you can just double click that in order to raise the same height same thing I'm just going to try to select those Click that. You can double click these to um, deselect those instead of making a box because I was selecting those. Uh, make it a group and make it a component and correctly reverse and faces. Same thing here. Now I can just triple click that and make it a loop. Go into that. Actually, make that component first and then add in the point pieces. So, there's your geometry, and I know they are raised up. So, that. And this one will be raised up a bit more to repeat. It's that, and I need to wrap this up. So what I'm going to do is, you can use a follow me tool, which is a tool that allows you to just follow the path of the geometry. Once you select the path, and then take a follow me tool to give it a face and sort of draws that geometry for you. And this shouldn't be angled like that, so just cut that up. Follow the red axis, push pull, just sort of erase the geometry. Then you can delete those lines since they are not necessary. I think that one is necessary since there is sort of a curvature there. So reverse and remove faces. And that should sort of give you a nice pull. So as I did that, same thing applied here. I think you need those lines. I clean that line should be okay. Yeah. Same thing applied over there. So the steps are good. It wrapped around. Now I need to worry about this water feature here. Um, I don't actually. So what I can do is use these lines as a reference for all we to. Make 
shows so select and follow once and then copy that and paste in place and I'm just gonna draw a rectangle and use follow me tool create the geometry now follow me tool doesn't exactly understand sometimes it needs to stop so I'm just gonna clean that up in here that and also I need to add that so I'm just gonna select this edge here and move and I show you. And also reverse, triple click that. You can pull it up. Let's see how that lines up with on the other side. After making this, so after making this, I'm gonna hide this here and try to use this as a reference since this geometry is not the same as one back there. I did notice some lines that does not meet up, so I'll clean that up. And over here, make sure that this line is all meeting where it should be. And this line should actually be extended so that that piece is sort of a triangle and this piece is a lot thicker uh, piece. And the pink or magenta line is um, parallel line. The SketchUp understands. So, should be that. So back here. Can sort of redraw the line and quickly break down. So those are the bases. And has drawn all the pieces. So we'll select all of that. Copy that and go outside of the group and then paste in place. Now that's done was a hard work so I'll save it so after making this I'm gonna use this as a reference to pull everything so I'm just gonna make another copy and put it somewhere close you know I should make that a group so that it can be separated and this I'm gonna start from the back this piece should be same height as that. This one should be same height as that. And that's it. You notice the distance is always sort of the same, so you can actually type in the so two and six. Four. Sometimes it can be tedious, but you can find your own way of doing it. Should be two feet. I'm just doing that process. So the last one is so the steps don't exactly um, have the same number, so it doesn't go up to the same height that's fine because you can actually adjust the height underneath it so you triple click this make that as a group and raise it up by one foot or however the distance you like I would actually make it the same height as this 
so everything underneath it I can pull down or just have it uh, floating because in 3D it doesn't, doesn't matter if that's heat. So, it looks like I'm going to worry with this in pieces. And then I'm going to hide some of the elements too. Underneath it, it's empty. This is now. I just noticed that, that some of these is empty. It's okay because you're never really gonna look underneath it. So I'm gonna leave that for now. But if you want to, you can also just sort of clean that up by going over the lines. It's always good to keep the model simple and clean. So. That. So side here, I'm just gonna give it a group. So double click it and right click it to make it a group. So I'm within inside that group that it is that is inside of the group. Um, I'm gonna actually make this a bit higher than the other. So that it lines up. And the problem I see here is that the back here is exactly not the straight line, so it actually wouldn't make a perfect triangle. So I'm gonna raise that up. So that's in. You'll notice that if I just pull that, it won't pull. It only pulls that way because it has to turn. But it's not exactly straight or perpendicular to here. So this is what some people call this uh, triangulating. But basically, drawing all the lines that sort of is necessary to create that 3D object. So. And the reason why it's not capping is because of this geometry here. Okay. So that. So click here. And that should cap everything. Now um, we can right click, reverse face, and new faces so that that side is mirror like that. And those lines are not visible when you're mapping it, so, or you can just take eraser tool, hold down shift while you're doing it, and then get rid of line. It's just hidden. That way, you don't see any glitch later. So that's that. And same thing for the side here. So here, just double click it and then make that a group. And then raise that up. Snap out the blue. And then, and then, same thing, go inside of the group. Raise that up the same height. Like a triangle, and same thing. You can't really pull it that way since it's, this line is not perpendicular. So same deal. However, this is not this not broken to two segments as the other one. So do that. Cap it. So reverse faces, green faces, and you should be done with that. And you can unhide everything. Right before that, I will actually just swap into that group. Next, 
and I should actually make this a component since it's going to be uh, repeated on the other side. Yeah. This is a component ultimately as well, so that this piece would actually follow the same rule on this side. Now I'm going to unhide everything. You go to edit, unhide, all, which is for me, shift U. I think the shortcut is you can assign it on your own. So that, so this should be done. And this can be also put on the side so I can select these three and take a mirror tool. So that should line up correctly and place in place. So after here, I'm just going to turn on the snapshot again and then go in here and try to work on this portion here. And you can hide this so that you will have that out of the way. Go into the CAD file. I'm going to try to clean up the lines a little bit. Um, once you can do about what you can do about these lines, uh, this line is not you see a segment, but you don't see an endpoint because this actually is imported as a curve. So you can increase the segments on here. Usually, it looks much better when it's increased in segments, but it would have to be multiple of 12. So, um, in this case, I'm just going to type in 48 to make it a lot smoother. And same thing for this one, it's 48. Just give it four times more number than what you see on the segment. So, for Definitely here. Let's also say 48. There's some cases that you might not see all that number, but uh, it seems like most of them are doing that. So actually, this one, yeah, you can have it higher number, and that sort of smooth it out the segmented curve. Now, what you will notice is that some of the lines may meet the other lines but some of them actually might not so in that case you can select those lines and then for the ones that are not meeting going over and not making an endpoint you can actually select them and right click it intersect faces and the model that should actually create an endpoint and also sort of give a different segment on the lines. And this one is not meeting that, so I'm just going to take extension tool. Extension tool and this to there. So it has that extension. And that should actually Give me a good line of this one on this extent. So, yeah. so, and here it does not, it, it meets, but then it doesn't create a uh, intersection. So I'm just going to select those two and I just face this with the model. But they should sort of close up all the areas. Let's check that by going here. So drawing the line. It seems like this area is a problem. And that may be because of this here. So we draw that and get rid of these lines. And then I can use these faces as my template or a reference. So let's copy that and go inside of the group, paste in place. And then these are much like the steps that are here. So three step by one foot, orient that, and then triple click that, double click these, and make that that as a group. And also this one, three step by one foot, triple click that, and deselect these, make that a group. Same thing, input, input, click this, make that a group. Now these should go up, 
so one foot and this one should also be one foot raised up I mean I'm sorry two feet so that's that and you repeat the same process here so I'm going to hide these go into that group one of the problem is there is actually that doubling those retaining wall and this one is also retaining so get rid of this actually this one is hardscape so I'm gonna actually get rid of hardscape and see if it makes any difference okay that's better so um, make sure all the lines are meeting if if it's short, you use extension too. And if it's overlapping but not making an endpoint, right click it through safe places with the model. Same thing here, same thing here, same thing here, right click it. So that should give a nice endpoint. Those seems to be fine. So let's make a line across and see if it makes any difference. So this one seems like it's having a problem somewhere like here. And this one is mine's just bad. Section is not a problem. That section is not a problem. Somewhere here is, and that's so somewhere here. I also that is giving me a problem. So I'm just going to clean this up and let's see what's going on here. That corner to this corner is okay. That corner to this corner. Here, if you zoom in too far in, it actually gives you a slight glitch like this. But sometimes you have to do that since CAD file doesn't exactly give you a nice clean file for lines. So I'm just going to make this. And I can copy these lines. Go outside of the group, paste in place. Same process, repeat. Select these, make that a group. And make that a group and orient faces. Same thing here, reverse it and orient faces. Orient faces, you can then raise that a foot. This one you raise that two feet. So there's your size, and I'm gonna unhide it all. So that should bring out the ones that you need. Um, that, and that should bring up nicely what you have drawn so far. Now I only have to work on this. So in this portion I'm just gonna hide some of the components that I don't need and uncheck hardscape in order for me to also clean up this side here because it's doubling up. So I'm gonna hide that and then work on extending these lines. So I'm going to take the extension tool, select this, here, select that, there, select this, there, and that should 
with an endpoint and uh, this seems like going over but I'm being the line so I'm just gonna try to select that and when I click it it looks like this is good I should be done I'm just gonna check that yes. yeah, and I'm gonna work on this curvature so this one seems like it's not needing it Sorry, I'm not supposed to select this in the same segment. So this one is This one is there. So this one. And the benefit of the eraser tool is that you don't have to go on online. You can just, as if you're using the eraser tool, you can click and drag, click and drag. So that's a lot easier lines instead of just trying to select and delete so that's what I like to use inspect them. Same time, it, it actually had drawn this one too, so I'll get to that later. But for now, I'll select that. I'll start with the paste in place and then increase these steps. On the CAD drawing, he said uh, 7 inches.
you don't necessarily have to make this all separate room, but it does help for later. So if you just want to keep it one room, you can do this and don't click that. However you like to do it. Just so seven inches. So it should give you a pair of short steps. And that you to see I can get these pieces just in place. And I'm going to increase that. Now you know I can really increase that much because it this one is not a group and it tends to sort of get limited on that point. So make that a group. I should have actually, before making the face here, I'm just going to make that a group and then paste in place the same thing that I copied before. So increase that the same height as this one, so 6 feet 5 inches. And this one I assume it's sort of like a, a bench inside there. So you can increase it by maybe three feet now. And then all that lining issue you can get rid of it. I believe there's a, a missing line, it's because of the hard scape here. And so there and hold down shift key on the erase key eraser tool so that Actually, delete those lines and just hide them. Orient universe pieces. And same thing repeated on this side. So I'm gonna make this as a group. And then hide that here. So in here I'm going to try to clean the lines again. Seems like meeting on the edge. Okay. And here is also the wing again. This is an escape. So turn off, retaining one goes away. So just hardscape for now. 
picture. These are perfectly done. So I pull them up by 7 inches, triple click that, make that a group, and then now I should orient that. And then operate everything else. It should be made now I will need to do this one. So a different method of modeling this would be um, also I would have to hide because it's doubling up. So this continuous line seems okay, but then I'm just gonna take two long lines. Actually three. So I'm gonna copy that side of the group, paste that, and from there I'm just gonna follow along this curvature. SketchUp generally gives me a nice curvature with the arc tool. Arc tool is A for short, C is circle, A is, and once you select the arc tool, it actually gives me option of four sides. I'll generally increase that to 24, just so that I don't see segments as often. So, I'm just going to keep the curvature there, select there, select here, match that as close as I can. So here, that's not going to do one curvature, so close here, that's there, take here, and close that out, and like that, and it should give me this. And once you've done that, you can lift that up, and six feet. Same thing on this side. Click here. here. Show how to match the curvature. Here. 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 Curvature. Here, 
there's my that hasn't snapped to each other. I can hide and get around and see. This is very cool. I should give surface on the right wall. And then this we can give it about six feet and large inches. That is good, super quick, good, super click. So that should like that. And now, if if you ever find this is a problem, then you can have you can do the same process as that. Um, you can just have this one brought in here and have it increase, or you can actually just trace that. Curvature. This is Seven feet and four feet, so that once I unhide the rest, I can come here, which is better. Like this, that a group, and let's use that one. Much more smoother curve. I can just delete what I have before and then decrease height. Sometimes you'll see a in between line like that. You can um, clip that up by um, shift key on the right screen, but it's not a major issue. So, what we are going to do here is generally follow along the pavement that we need here and have some of the layers turned on so that we can see what we're doing. What I want to do is not to create accurate tracing, but just kind of have it roughly underneath the model so that once we extrude these, um, it will be somewhat close to what we had and um, just stay underneath. There, here, so maybe just all of them. So I have just sort of went and traced on all of this. So I should I not make that in the um, I noticed that I haven't grouped up this piece here, so I'm just going to group that.
has been increased. Now I know the general height has to meet. Higher up. Six feet up. Maybe eight feet below that. And the reason why I sort of cut out the pavement here is that so that it follows general terrain of the model. Now the terrain, um, because of transparency, you can't quite see, but I can edit the transparency to so that you can see what the terrain is in regards to the model. So I'm going to go over some of the lines here, um, just keep it transparent for now. The terrain that we have made is like that, so you can see that in comparison to what our model is doing. So for now I'm just going to keep it a bit saturated so I can see the lines and I them unchecked and go over all these pavements. Once I have traced that, I'm gonna um, make them a group first. So each pavement, make it a group and just give it a height of six inches to increase that. what I have done. Um, and that's how you would um, make it. Just make sure that you generally follow the lines, but not exactly. You don't have to snap it on every single one of them because uh, that just makes the model more complex than necessary. Now, I'm going to try to match the heights that it was supposed to meet. So, some of these pavements. Blue, hold down shift key, and that means the other height. Um, and this one too. So increase height, tell the direction, hold down shift key on blue, and reference that. So that's there. So the pavement should be increased in height. And save that. Once we have done that, we can uh, um, add a material to these. Um, for concrete or asphalt, you should uh, give it a, that sort of texture. And materials, you can just go to um, the paint bucket tool here and click on that or B for short. And uh, there are a variety of selections that are available to you by the default of SketchUp. So, for example, the ground cover, you can um, pick on one of these and add to a sketch that you can have your own material and actually create your own material by clicking this and then putting your own 
um, material. Usually JPG, JPEGs are fine. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, for areas that should receive the same sort of mapping as the Google Earth image, um, for example, this planter here, I will just use um, this tool here, sample paint, or hold down Alt key and just apply there. So that should sort of give the same look um, as it's supposed to giving sort of total new material. Or um, if you don't want to do that, you can look for something that you can use as sometimes materials um, look just generically just gray um, or okay this cladding stuff or white can be also used as a concrete so you can give that color so here you can just kind of go over or if you would like to give it some sort of pavers you can do that as well and if you think um, it's just repeating um, too many times, meaning the bricks are too small, you can actually give it a uh, different size so that they're generally more increased in size. And however you would like to, I know that um, this was supposed to be brick pavers, so if you do that, everything else will follow and you can add this material you can select everything but this here add that material that way it gives sort of the same material to all now you can just click on the group um, and add the material but you have another method where you go inside of the group and give the materiality that way if you do that um, not just that component or the group but also everything else that is in the model that follows the same material so here so I would give material however I know this is a plant bed so what I would look for is something similar um, you can look for vegetation something perhaps follow what you're trying to do so, same thing over here whatever anything else but that to the same material as this now here for these to be stone look however the top of it is supposed to be um, the water feature so I'm going to try to put uh, water material water like material um, just have material added stone and just the very top of it just not create a very um, I'm just going to give it one line on top of that or one face on top of that Just have it slightly above so that it gives that look of water on top of water. I mean, I'm sorry, water on top of stone. And look for something translucent where it has a texture for water. So sparkling. And if it looks too blue, you can actually change the color and make it. Generally, I like the deeper water, so I'm just going to do that. And give it a transparency, of course. Transparency. If you give transparency, it should look uh, better. And this is not exactly how it's going to look like when it's rendered, so you can keep it as it is for now. 
this one too. I should do it the inside. And if you want to go to default, you can just click this and add that. So I think I should. I should um, add a So once I have done that. So these are supposed to be more porous material. So give them the material. And now if you decide that this three type of papers are not the look that you would like to go for then you can always go ahead and change by um, selecting that edit and give it a different type of uh, texture that you would like and I think I missed this Give this water look here. So I'm just going to take that texture and just fly off. That would look much different from the other side. Let's try to cancel that. So instead of adding the material directly on top, I'm just going to select all of this. And give it a water layer. Copy that um, slightly above, maybe half inch above. I'm just going to group them so that I don't have to select them ever again. And just give that material onto the group. So that should look somewhat similar to that. And I've noticed that um, this is supposed to be concrete and this is a uh, previous uh, porous material in this uh, aggregate so I'm going to do that. So what I'm going to do is change the material here. Um, I have this material that I want to add in uh, the stock. So open that and so I've changed that, I should have changed everything else as well. So that's that, and uh, if there's anything else that you would like to a different type of material, you can do that. So make sure you try to find anything that you have missed. That's good. And just a bit. So let's um, give these pavements some height correction because as you have might notice uh, some of the heights for the pavements don't exactly work you can see some terrains actually coming up on the pavement because the pavements are sort of modeled flat in comparison to in real life they will have height difference going up and down 
so let's match the grading. Um, this one is fine here on the very bottom of the ring. However, the rest needs to be trait. So we're gonna take that. So select so like all the pavements in addition to the terrain that we have and um, other than that we're just gonna hide so Everything else should be hidden. I'm just gonna split that and turn off the snapshot. So the terrain is here in the pavement, and all the pavements I'm just going to select and raise them up by 50 feet. So snap it onto blue axis and give it 50 feet. Like that. While you selected that, you go to sandbox. Drape, same to be fine here. So I'll drape and then select the terrain. And once you will see the progress bar going, it might take a while depending on your machine. And once it finishes, it should look something like this where all the lines of the pavement have been drawn on here. So you go. We can go inside of that loop and then add this material onto it. So yeah, um, give it the material. Also, it seems like it hasn't cleaned up the edge. Like that, and add it to your So, yeah, um, should be all cleaned up. And sometimes the terrain information is not exactly accurate, so the combination of this drape and Pavement that you have modeled would be actually the best way to have them in the model. So, for example, let's unhide everything. And you see, there's some funny things going on here, and this pavement not exactly going up there. So, you can have a couple of them leveling up to your model so that it would meet somewhere that you would like to and then you can just break it off at one of the points to meet and I will do this one 50 feet below so and make this one 50 feet Just transparency, yes, that looks more solid. And I'll actually put this in a separate layer. And if I want to hide them, so I can hide. So let's give some trees onto the site. Uh, I'll turn on the proposed planting tree. Uh, right now you can't really see much since the grading is above that, so I'll turn that off. And these are the locations for the trees and Google offers or the SketchUp offers uh, some default trees. You can get your own 
um, by searching trees or a certain type of tree in um, Google Warehouse and they have nice 3D trees but, um, however sometimes they do increase the uh, rendering time so it's it's actually advised that you don't use the 3D trees as much but you can do that um, you can also use some other type of trees that are available as 2D and you can scale them according to your size so perhaps something like that I'm not sure what type of tree is supposed to be there but you can search up what you would like uh, they do have sort of the default tree so landscape The dynamic components, but it's and Google's or the Trimble's uh, models are relatively simple, so they don't increase the uh, rendering times as much. So you can use them if you would like to. Sort of repeat them over. So Twenty-two feet. Yeah, that's how you would place over the site. Um, you can also bring in 2D uh, just for the visual purposes. I would normally add the trees in Photoshop because uh, that's a more efficient way of doing things. But you can definitely use one of these trees for a different type of look. Uh, 2D trees are actually face me components, so as you turn around, you'll notice that tree just sort of faces you yeah you can keep it that way or sort of sketch look or um, just as a conceptual way of understanding things not as realistic um, that way you can keep your model size uh, much lower than what it needs to be with the 3D, uh, 3D trees so that's how people usually place trees or um, any uh, bushes um, on the sides so you can do that and I'll come back with um, more uh, accurate tree placement and show you how to render and uh, give different type of material reflections and lighting all that and then I'll explain those after you put all the trees and it should look like something very close to this. Uh, you'll notice that um, as you add more 3D trees, your machine tends to slow down very much so. So what you will need to do is actually select them and put it in one layer so that you can turn on and off uh, as you model. Um, the process is done through selecting all of them. And now, if you have a plugin of instances, select, select only, deselect, and these are um, available through the selection kit. So uh, you can get those by having that plugin. So if I just do this, it just selects all the trees, perhaps the ones that are in different scales as well. So what I'm going to do is I can just simply go here 
and put this in a layer that I want to have it. So I have done that. So if I turn off, turn that layer off, those will disappear. Now I do want these small trees in that layer as well. So what I'm going to do is also just select this. If you don't have the plugin, it's fine. You can just hold down the shift key and select all of them manually, like so. And if you're on a Mac where this layer function is not available, you can just right click them. So right click it, entity info, and just change that layer to your desired layer. So if you do that, um, it will be put in there and since it's not visible, um, it just disappears. So then your machine should run much smoother than before. Um, that way you model and before you render or produce the final drawing, just turn them on so that that are in your model. So I'm just going to turn them off for now. And that is how you um, organize all of your trees and any other extra furnitures that are outside, perhaps um, too complicated for your model to handle. Um, it's best that you avoid those models. However, um, if you need them, this is a way to organize them and keep your model simple. This portion of the pavement was supposed to be modeled with more previous material so I'm just going to sample that material and add them onto the pavements. Now I'm going to try to model the cistern. So make the cistern layer uh, visible and take a line tool to just trace along the four edges. You will notice that um, the lines don't line up with the axes however if you just carefully zoom in and follow along all four edges a face should appear now I'm just gonna pull that up a uh, six feet and this is just a geometric uh, representation of where the system will be placed so there's really no need to put a material but you can do so if you want to uh, triple click that make it a group this is the best time you can put a material on it and you can just make sure you snap onto the blue axis and then I'm gonna give it depth of uh, 16 feet and that is what it's supposed to be counting the 10 feet um, height of the cistern and that should be underneath the model. So your cistern is placed and you can now check that off. There's your cistern. I'm going to show you how to put a roof to existing buildings. Now if you go into one of these models, if you double click it, you'll notice that um, you can edit the group so you can just copy the very top surface of the building and then go outside of the group by hitting escape and just paste in place so edit paste in place and once you have done that now if you just trace along one of the edges it's going to draw additional facing here. Now if you double click this it um, selects all the outer edges and also the face and if you delete that you'll notice that it has become a one continuous surface. Now I'm just going to pull that up maybe a foot triple click that to make it as a group and I'm actually going to put that group into the building layer so that they're all together and once I have done that I'm going to go inside of that group select everything and take the paint bucket tool B for short and sample the uh, very 
bottom which is the Google snapshot that you have imported and then just paste it on there now sometimes it might not line up and if you just uh, sample that uh, some, somewhere close and just, um, just uh, click on here to paste the material um, it just paste the, paste the material that is right underneath of that so um, I know this is flat however that's just a, a graphic representation of the roof so if you do the same thing over here go into that group copy and then paste in place and just trace along the one of the edges and then double click and delete and just pull that up foot group that and you can add the same material so select everything add the same material so the roof has been added now I'm going to show you how to make the benches uh, I would actually model them separately the benches are actually placed along this pavement here so I'm going to check that on and then actually double click it so I can get into that and um, if you actually just double click on this line it should select all the bench lines so when you have done that just copy that and you can actually start a new file because it will be a lot easier this way um, I'm just going to start a new file and just actually just paste on here so if you paste on here that bench along alone should be copied here now that's going to be copied multiple times on the other model so I'm just going to have one as a component done and once you have the line I'm just going to import the image and I have the sketch image that was done so the concept design any reference line either it's from CAD or Photoshop or just hand-drawn files could, could be scanned and used for a SketchUp modeling so I'm going to import this so lay somewhere along there the scale does not matter much at this point but I'm just gonna have it like that and I'm just going to simply trace over the elevation now um, you can just take either straight line so that looks like a straight line in the beginning so I can just take the line tool and then follow along and then the curve starts here so I can take the arc tool make sure your sides are somewhere above 12 um, it should be multiple of that so I'm just going to type in 24 and I'm just going to gradually trace that and looks like a straight line try to follow the axes if you can and so you have turn okay just continue. so the general um, scale where this bench was actually not given to me so I can only base on these sketches however it's sufficient I'm just gonna give it a thickness of maybe four inches and that seems too small so I'm just gonna give it six inches instead so here I'm gonna give it six inches and there is an offset tool available, so I'm just going to select the line. It's kind of hard to see at the moment, but I'm just going to take the offset tool and then just give it six inches, and it should snap off there. And so here, I'm just going to go down and type in six. Now that should generate a face, which is a good sign all the lines are snapped off and matched at each corner. And I'm just going to double click that and make that um, as a group. Now I have to make this sort of follow along this line here. 
and I also need to scale that. So I'm going to make that stand up first. So you should take uh, Q for short and it's a rotation tool here. And you can make that stand up. This is a three click process. So first you drag it. So from this point, the base point, I'm just going to drag my mouse, hold down the key. And then I'm going to try to snap it onto either green or red. This one, in case, this case, I'm going to do it on red. So if I just kind of drag my mouse around and try, I can snap it onto certain axes. So I'm going to do it to the red and let go. So my sort of angle snapped on. And this is now I'm going to give it the bottom of the protractor. So I'm going to do it somewhere over here. And then I click there, and then I also click at 90 degrees. You should be able to see the angle, or just look for the blue axis or somewhere that it snaps. So here, it generally snaps on 90 degree or 45 degree things like that. So I'm just gonna do it. Click here. So now it's, uh, that's perpendicular. Now I know this is a, this is a top of the bench so the top of the bench should generally kind of match here so I'm just going to rotate that so I'm going to drag around so that I can have it snap onto the blue and then my first reference point I'm just gonna have it something like like that and then try to take this edge and match it to the line that I already have. I'm gonna go to X-ray view mode because sometimes it doesn't snap on the edge. It's a good idea to go to X-ray view. And I'm gonna try to align that. So take the rotation tool again. Try to have it on the blue axis. So snap on the blue. And then I'm gonna make this one matched to here. Click there and click here. So now that um, I think it should be scaled much less so I'm just going to scale it scale it down now no measurements are given to me however if you have a measurement you can scale it so that it matches um, I think it should be at actually the entire thing so just going to do that. It looks generally fitting. And I'm gonna explode this, which means I'm gonna have that outside to the group. It's no longer a group. And now I'm just going to select the path of this bench. So that, and I'm just going to select this and take follow me tool and then click the face so first I have selected the path and then while selected you take the tool and just click on the surface that you want to extrude with so I have created that curvature bench and I just have to delete these lines here just make it like that select delete so the bench is made. I do notice that actually the face is inside out. So I'm just going to reverse one of them and orient faces. That should clean that up. And then triple click that to make it a component. I'm just going to call it a bench. And then I can actually copy this and then paste on to the same place. So paste and then just Put it somewhere close, then you can line that. And another tool that you can use is actually trying to copy that over instead of having them copied and then trying to rotate to the correct angle. Um, you can do that. However, I'm going to try an alternative function here. Um, first, I'm just going to give it uh, the general arc of this so it should be the arc and once I have 
done that arc. Sorry, I should actually do it outside of the book. So I'm just gonna go, just going to cut this and I'm gonna paste that on outside of the cat line drawing. So put it there, paste in place, and I'm just going to draw on the arc. Once that arc is done, you can right click it and point at center. And if you do that, a point should appear, and I think it's this one here. And that's the center point of this big circle. If you imagine a bigger circle, that's the center point. And now that's going to be my reference point. So once you have select the bench, you can take the rotation tool and I'm sorry, the rotate tool, and this one works much like the move tool. You can still copy. So uh, once you have that, I'm going to give it the base point. Try to snap it onto blue. Click there, and I'm going to give it the start point, which is right here. Now instead of just moving along the track, I'm just going to toggle on control, which will create additional copy and you can click here and it made a copy now I can type in 2x to have another bench or 3x to have additional bench so I have created an array of the bench along there and now you can add um, any type of material that you would like on the bench in my case, I'll just look for something perhaps it's close to a concrete. Uh, let's try this material here. So, uh, the material I can add here, there, or if you're if you actually go inside of the group and add the material into the component itself it should be applied to all. So that's how you make the benches and once you enable the trees uh, they should be all in between. Now I'm going to make the post and whole light visible. Those are these and the circles that are um, arrayed here and I'm going to try to use a component that is provided by Google so the window components and you can go to landscape and you should have some landscape uh, furniture that are available for you so exterior lighting and I like the tube path light so I'm just going to download that model. Yes. And I can place them into these. Now if they're supposed to be uh, much thicker or um, higher, uh, you can edit them by giving a scale. S for short, where you can just click on this and then you can make it either uh, much higher or bigger. That is up to you. Um, so, we'll just do this copy, copy move tool to just kind of try to find the center and have them in place. And also I'll find the straight light, straight lamp post down the bottom. And if you have any other preferences, you can model your own 
or actually search up the Google Reading Warehouse. Uh, that is entirely up to you. Uh, and wherever you see these marks, those are the places where you would place a street line or any type of other uh, light that you think that is equivalent to the pole light that you can do that and once you have done that uh, you can enable all the layers that you have worked on, worked on so far uh, that you should be able to see a full 3D of the site now if any of these light is supposed to be rotated perhaps these two are supposed to face the other way then what I can do is select that and take move tool and sh these small red cross symbols should appear on top and you can just take any of these and then rotate that and make sure you snap it onto this axis and just move it so I can just instead of rotating this just delete that and take move tool and from this point to that point I toggled on the copy function so you can do that probably same thing over here here and here and you can fill in all those sides I'm going to create a additional layer for CAD drawing and actually put this um, CAD drawing group into that layer so I can take out all the unnecessary lines into invisible layer and I can make the grading or a snapshot and also the trees to make the model more realistic. Now you can toggle on the shadow function by clicking here so that your model receives a shadow into the site. Now this, this is very heavy on your machine so it might take a while however for you to get a good perspective view over over the site uh, this is a very good way of displaying that I also have enabled the pavement so I can also see the pavement within the site and I want to show you how to clean up these lines here just go inside of that group, take the eraser tool, E for short, and then you can hold down shift key in order to hide them. So while holding down the shift key, you can just go over them, drag your mouse across, and you will be able to hide all those lines. Once you have done that, the face should be a lot clearer. And now if I look at the CAD drawing, and I do have these three perspective points. First I'm going to focus on this area here and first I wasn't sure of how high this, these uh, stones would be or the sitting area would be however um, you can lower it um, according to the height that you want them to be at and I have set up as 4 feet and 5 inches from the ground so you can set that so that when you have when you have the perspective view you can see a lot more clear from this point to out and when you want to set up the perspective point of view um, you can go to position the camera you can click that and you can position yourself um, where you're supposed to be now if you go back to the CAD file you'll notice that you're supposed to be somewhere around here so I'm going 
and click somewhere around here and that should take me to that point now sometimes your eye level could be a lot higher so this was by the default it was 5 feet and 6 inches when you click this you'll notice that height offset is 5 feet and 6 inches now if you assume that your um, height is about 6 feet you can type in 6 feet and then click here and your uh, eye level will be a lot higher which will allow you to see much more on the side and I can enable the trees for a better view. Now you will notice that the background is sort of wide at the moment. We have set up that way so that we can model easier. However, you can go to edit in window styles and then you can actually set the background and give it a uh, color. So you can either set the background or the sky. If you give it a sky, it has a sort of a gradation over it or you can also enable the ground. I do not recommend giving it a sky or the ground because you will see sort of the horizon there. So you can just give it some um, light blue or um, the color that you would like. But it is also fine to have it as sort of um, just plain white that is uh, totally acceptable and if you want to look somewhere different you can take this tool look around and you can drag your mouse around so as you do that you can sort of look around the site so I'm just gonna look this way because um, it was I was told to look kind of that way so I'm doing that and to save the view I'm going to go to camera I'm sorry view animation add scene so once I do this a menu should pop up and you can just have it create scene and once I have that scene saved this position is has been saved now I can orbit out from that position and I'm gonna look for another perspective which is P1 on the other side so I can go here and then actually position myself right here so if I do that I can look to that way and I'm supposed to look directly to the other side so I'm gonna position myself in such way and then go to animation and scene and that should save as scene 2 now if you click scene 1 it should take me to the original position scene 2 to the other side. Now the third perspective point of view would be right here um, next to the second bench probably from the bench so I can orbit out and I'm gonna locate that second bench here and I can set, set myself perhaps I'm sitting down so I can give it the height offset of 3 feet so Instead of 6 feet, I can give it 3 feet and 3 feet above the bench. So I can click right there. Oops. I can click here. And I can look towards however the CAD file told me to. So I can look towards these trees here. So like so and you can set the height and then you can add that scene as well and if you load up the scene manager right clicking this in scene manager and that will allow you to change the names of each scene so you can come here click this and instead of saying scene 3 I think it was supposed to be this is P3 so I can set that up as P3 and this scene if I double click it it will take me to that position and that scene was supposed to be P1 so I'll change to P1 and the other one is obviously P2
and I want to change that order so I'll just click this arrow P1, P2, P3. Even though I close this I can just double click on it and it will take me to each position. So here and my trees are boxing out because my machine is trying to render as I move however if you have the trees turned off uh, that shouldn't appear however um, each scenes do um, remember which layer it was turned on and which layer it was hidden so um, even though I check that off if I take to one scene it will actually turn that on again however I'll save it here and that's how you look at all the scenes. Now I'm going to show you how to do the sections uh, over the site. If you look at the CAD file, you should have A2 section here and B1 section here. So A2 section, it's going to be parallel to the building face on this side. So I'm just going to I'm sorry, it's A1 and A2, uh, A1 and A2, so it's A section. So the A section will be parallel to this building here. So there is a section tool here, um, section plane, and you can basically click here because you'll notice that the section plane will sort of rotate it around depending on where you are hovering your mouse at. So since it's parallel to this, I'm going to click here and that should give you a section plane and you can select the edge and take the move tool to sort of um, move that around and you can now cut the section of the site that way and I'm gonna try to locate for, based on the CAD file it'll, it'll be cutting this portion of the stairs also the cistern so I'm going to look for that so I'm going to move the section and it's gonna be right here now I'm also going to enable the trees so I think it will be somewhere right here so once I have that set up uh, you'll notice that um, the parts that has been cut is sort of shown as light blue it's because I have initially set up the back side of the face as a light blue. So if you, um, for modeling purpose, this was a lot easier to have it as a light blue. But um, if, when you're cutting sections, it's actually best to have it as black. So once you've done that, you click this to update it. And now your section should appear as black because that's how typically sections are displayed and you can remove this by clicking uh, display section cuts I'm sorry the display section planes if you click that that would disappear however it will still cut if you click this it would actually disable the section cut so I would actually have this on and just kind of remove that for either a screenshot or a scene so I can actually save this scene as well so view animation add scene and then from the scene manager I can, I can now move that all the way to the bottom and I can cut that, call that as section A now that's that and I also have to take the section B which is on this side so I'm going to have a parallel section to this building here. so I have done that now you'll notice that um, the previous section has section plane has been grayed out which is deactivated um, but this section is now so I'm going to turn off the trees so I can maneuver easier and take the move tool and move it and put it to the correct position it was supposed to be 
right here after the system. So I'm going to do that. And I'm also going to disable the plane, update that, and save that scene. Um, turn on the trees, and again, view animation, add scene, and that's scene 5. And at scene manager, I'm going to change name to section B after you finish all the modeling part and have all the saved scenes um, now I'm just going to show you how to save them as sort of a still shot image or a JPEG um, one way would be um, to, to have it nice, you can have the shadows drawn by default of SketchUp and you can have the shadow enabled here on and off. And you can change the day of the month and also time of the day. And if you um, enable complex geometry like trees, you can see how the shadow changes throughout the day. So this is a site where um, the shadow you can do the shadow study, and also um, if you have trees on, um, the trees will cast the shadows onto the site as well. So I can go to scene one, which is a perspective one, and I can save this as a JPG, and you can go to file, export, two D graphic and make sure you select JPG um, uh, I do recommend JPG over any other um, uh, bitmap file that is available so JPG and make sure you select the option and go over all the menu make sure you uncheck this and have some number somewhere larger than 2000 on the width and the height will follow so for example you can have it 3000 or 2000 if it's lower than that it's going to give you very pixelized image which will result looking bad so make sure you have something higher than 2000 for the width at least and make sure you check this and have it the best now once you save that it might take a while to save the image so um, it, it might take a couple minutes so I'm just going to save some time and just show you an example. So the scene one would look probably something like this and this is saved at 2000 and you see all the lines enabled. Now if you go to go back to SketchUp you can go to Window, Styles, Edit and then you can click on this box and disable the edges and which will remove all the lines here which is more realistic because in real life you don't have those abstract lines now if you see that the lines are going to be uh, disappeared and it will probably look better than um, the other one uh, it, depending on your taste your preference so you can save it however you would like it to be and also other scenes could be saved the same way now if you go back here you'll realize the field is sort of pixelized because of the Google shot that has been saved um, you can uh, give it a different texture so if I want um, sort of an artificial grass I can look for a texture that suits vegetation grass and I can add the texture which will um, give a better texture however it may look too artificial uh, you can find better material or better uh, texture image and uh, paste them here so that it looks more realistic uh, that's your own choice and um, sometimes it might be better to not 
have these trees included in your shots because they do increase the render time or image generating time and you can add them easily on Photoshop so you can perhaps have one exported as 2D graphic and have noted where the trees are located and how they are scaled and you can actually add them in Photoshop and that's usually how the any of vegetation or the people are cropped in to those renderings. Now that's how you do to uh, the export and you can also hide the buildings and that may actually make it look better you can um, go take a shot, the uh, real uh, site picture, and then actually have them uh, paste in in Photoshop, which may um, increase the uh, more realistic look of it. And that's how I would usually do it.